Let me say good morning to each of you. We thank God for all of his bountiful blessings. We are glad to be once again in the Southwest Convention. Uh, we want to recognize our President, President Carlton Hope, President of the Southwest Convention, Dr. M, and his staff. And we also want to recognize uh, Reverend David Craig with the Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Then we want to recognize uh, Sister Jackie Cleveland, who is President of the Southwest of Missouri, and her staff. Amen. 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 And it gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to introduce someone who in a few days we will have been married 22 years and our time together. She did not my side in some of my high moments and she did not my side in many of my all of my low moments. And we thank God for that. In terms of family, she is the daughter of David and Annabelle Thomas uh, from the Mountville area of Hale County. And uh, she is a mother, a mother of John Alvin Jr. And she is a grandmother of our granddaughter, Ava Marie Cleveland. So we thank God for what she means to us in our family. Amen. And uh, in terms of uh, education, she has a bachelor of arts degree and a master of arts degree in Christian education from <coughs> seven universities. She is a teacher in the state congress. She is a teacher in the seven university extension here uh, in Mobile. Her Christian work is very numerous. She sings and a couple of our choirs at Corinthian. And uh, she's a Sunday school teacher at our church. And she served as the director of the Board of Christian Education. And, uh, and so we thank God for her contribution to the whole ministry that God has given to us as Christians. She is a motivator. She is a positive thinker. And I thank God for her. And I thank God for the work that she has done in the Southwest of the nation since she's been a part of it. Amen. 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 I got called to Corinthian and came here, came here working in the field of part of the Southwest Convention. So we thank God for that. And I think I heard Dr. Folks ask me to give. Our address. Okay, our home address is 1557. 1557 Lockwood. That's L A R K. W-O-D, one word, L-A-R-K-W-O-D, drive, Mobile, Alabama, 36618. Amen. Without any further ado, we want to bring forth our speaker of the house.
Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we give you praise today for who you are. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. And we ask, Lord Jesus, your presence upon this day and your blessings upon this day. We thank you, Father, for this Southwest District Day Convention and all those that make up this convention. We ask, Father, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on us right now as we go forth, Lord Jesus, to give this address and those things that you know. Put on our hearts to say today. We promise to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. For it's truly in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hello, South. Hello. We are so thankful to God for this opportunity to just be here breathing. Amen. amen. We realize that there are so many that are not today. We want to recognize our president, President Hogue, Vice President Payne. We recognize all of our women's auxiliary vice presidents, although they're not here, Sister Hodges and Sister Dorothy Thomas. We recognize this morning our matrons president, Sister Jessica Petway. We recognize Sister Jenny Knott, Knott our youth director, Brother Keith Gibby, our layman's president, and all of those that are part of the cabinet of President Hope. We recognize those ones in the state this morning as well, our state president, President Melvin Owens, and our women's auxiliary president, Sister Maxine Abrams, all of our wing presidents, all of our women's auxiliary West Wing President, Women's Auxiliary, and we would like to recognize our Northwest Sister Jeff Josephine Swift, Northeast Sister Kathleen Spratley, and our Southeast Sister Jean, Sister Jean Mad. To our host today, Reverend Sandy McQueen, and the True Vine Church family, we thank you for inviting us in, accepting our invitation to come. We recognize Margaret Frazier and the Sunlight District Association, as well as Sister, Matt, Sister Althea Ford, the Women's Auxiliary President. Sister Diane Samuel, who is the president of our Corinthian Baptist Church and Missionaries Department. And we want to thank my pastor and my husband for presenting us this morning and thank him for those words. To all under the sound of my voice, we greet you in Jesus' joy. For it's definitely a joy to just be around just to look at each other. I have a few things I can get out of the way before I give an account of my stewardship. And I was told to uh, my sister, uh, Brian, Sister Irma Brian, who's not with us today. And she really wanted to be here. She wanted me to tell you all hello, and she missed being with us at this time. So we just want to thank Sister Brian for her hard work with our Salem University banquet. And we have to ask that you all will continue to support that banquet. And also from our state auxiliary president, women's auxiliary president, Sister Maxine Abel, asked me to remind you that the mission guides are available and ready for purchase. If you would like information about who to call or that to order your guides, you can call me and I will give you that information. But if you already have a guide, the information is in the back of it. So with no further ado, we're going to give an account of our stewardship. Last year this time, we were convening in, great, in the great city of, historical city of Selma, Alabama. We were hosted royally by Reverend James Perkins and the Ebenezer Baptist Church family. We would like to thank Ebenezer and Reverend, Reverend Perkins for welcoming us and accommodating us in such a warm and loving manner. So from the Southwest District family, we salute you today, and we thank you. After leaving Ebenezer, traveling back to, the, to our various homes and cities, 
We stopped in the Northeast to support Sister Kathleen Spratley for her annual address. From there, we traveled to the Northwest to support Sister Josephine Swift for her address. We started planning for our year, our year annual session where we find ourselves in a virtual Southwest convention. Very new, but not to go. We started this year with 2020 vision, looking with clear, fresh eyes. We traveled to Selma in January for our, our Winter Board meeting, which also held at the, at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. And then we traveled in March to the Southwest District Board meeting in Lowellsboro, Alabama, where the Reverend Courtney Mills and the First Baptist Whitehall Church family host us. We would like to thank them for accepting us this year. And then came COVID-19, a pandemic that touched every nation and every walk of life. We're doing things differently. We're washing our hands. We're washing our sleeves and our coughs. We're covering. We're covering our faces with masks. We're sitting at a distance. But we want you to know that God is still present and very close back. We're home with people we share home with, but don't really know. And some of us are about to lose our mind because we used to being busy and about. But I ask that you just stand still, wait, because this will pass. We're watching protesters in the street, but you know what? That's not me. God has gotten our attention in a big way. The universe is in a state of unrest. But there's nothing new under the sun. Although there are some of us of this age, older and younger, who never experienced this before. So we are being very cautious. But that's wisdom. That's wisdom. But we have still, we still have a tax. We still have a mandate. Although we are somewhat fearful but cautious, we continue to feel the mandate of going. I'm reminded in 2 Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. God has allowed pastors and ministers to lead, and leaders of faith to use technology to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in most cases, to reach and touch lives that they never would have before. I heard, I hear the phrase used, new norm. We're doing a new thing. As I said before, there's nothing new. God has just revealed his power to us. To let us know that we all have, we're all tomorrow. You need to get things back in order. God is waiting for us to catch up. God is the one who has the plans for our lives. We are not the one with the plans. We made plans to come here as a convention. Those plans were shifted. But we're still doing God's will. We're still getting the word out. We are still doing what he has put into our hands to do. We are experiencing a virtual thing that is new to us, but not new to God. As we experience this time of separation from one another, we need to never forget that God is still in control. I would like to encourage your spirit today with the scripture from Acts 2, 1 and 4. And I'm going to read that for you. If you have your Bible, you can turn it on with me. And I promise not to keep you in too much longer. And it reads thusly. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. 
And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues and the Spirit, as the Spirit gave them utterance. We would like to encourage your spirit today with the subject, Christ focused in a temporary situation. Christ focused in a temporary situation. The book of Acts is only is the only historical record of the birth of the early days of the church. Internal evidence within the Acts within the Acts and the external evidence of the church tradition declares Luke as the author of this book, who also wrote Luke, the Gospel of Luke. The primary person, purpose of writing these two volumes was to give an accurate, orderly account of the development of Christianity. In the book of Luke, Luke, Luke relates to Theophilus, the word and the works of Christ Jesus Christ. And in Acts, he told the story of the words and works of Christ that were done by the apostles. Luke's second, second purpose for writing Acts was to give a written defense of Christianity. Luke was very certain about the precepts that the people, the perception that the people had about the church of Jesus Christ. We should be focused on who the church is. Yeah. The church is not this building, y'all. We are the church. So the church goes on. It continues. And the third purpose of the Acts was to provide stability to the new faith. Luke wanted his readers to know that this movement was not merely the result of the effort of Zelia's men. He placed a great emphasis on the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that we don't like to talk about. But he is present. And he is always working. Acts 1 and 8 is the key to the Acts of the Apostles. As it reveals the great commission given to Christians. Although there is a pandemic, Christians are to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Spreading the good news that, that he died and he rose again in order to redeem mankind. Evangelization of the world is the great theme of this book. In chapter 1 of Acts, Luke tells the, of the ascension of Jesus. The ascension was a necessity because there, because there had to be a final moment when Jesus went back to the glory which was his. The 40 days of his post-resurrection appearance had passed. Although unique, it could not be forever. For the second reason, we must transport ourselves in imagination of time when this happened. In this day and time, we do not regard heaven as some local place beyond the sky. We regard it as a state of blessedness where we will be forever with God. There was a time when every man, even the wisest, thought of the earth as flat and the heaven as a place just above the sky. Therefore, Jesus, therefore Jesus was to give his followers an unanswerable proof that he returned to his glory. The ascension was absolutely necessary. When Luke tells of this in the gospel, he says, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Luke 24, 52. The ascension brings us face to face with the second coming. We must remember to speculate to not, we don't need to speculate when he's coming. We just need to stay here. Because no one knows the day of the hour when he comes. But you know, we always hear about all of these things that are essential. The gospel is essential. The essential teaching of Christianity.
understands it is that God has a plan for man and for the world. So what we see now, God is already there knowing what's already going to happen. The second coming is not a matter of speculation. And it just be, you can be curious. Curiosity is fine. It is a summons to make ourselves ready for that day when it comes. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, the Lord was asked if he was going to restore the kingdom of Israel at that time. Although he did not deny the future establishment of the kingdom, but rather informed them that the time was God's decision. He gave them a command to go throughout the world preaching the gospel. He encouraged them with truth that they would be able to do what they would be able to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you see what we're able to do with the power of the Holy Spirit? Using wisdom, although our church doors are closed, our hearts are still open to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. The Holy Spirit unites us. The apostles, apostles were waiting. Are we waiting? Are we staying focused? Jesus had promised, had promised that many days would go by after the ascension before he would send the Holy Spirit. They were all together in one place. And all of a sudden, there came from heaven a sound of a loud moon. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared to them and settled on all of them. They were all filled with the, with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues. Let's not be caught up on the tongue. They all heard. It's the hearing that's important. It filled not only the room, but all of those, all the house where they were sitting. The wind was used as a symbol of the spirit working. The fire offered time, time speak, oftentimes speak of divine presence and description. The speaking in tongues will be used by God to give an opening for the preaching of trials. Women and men of God, we're in a privileged position, special, royal, and holy. Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2 and 19, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that may be wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. As God's people, we must be instruments to carry the gospel message to the ends of the earth. The church is made up of ordinary but privileged people. We are the light, salt of the earth, and be helpful by which the gospel will be successfully carried. We are the church united, made up of individuals united for Christ, with the mind. And if we're going to be focused, we have to be informed about what God is doing in the city, what he's doing in the state, what he's doing in the world. Have you completed your 2020 century? Have you mailed it in? Do you know what is needed in your community? Are you following the guidelines put in place for this COVID, for this coronavirus? That, was a, that is something that we need to be focused on. We need to be informed about what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it. Are you concerned about, are you concerned about who will lead our country in November? Are you reading your Bible? Are you concerned about what the Word of God is saying to you? Are you spending time with God? Let us stay focused. We need to be informed. Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 6 to 8 admonish us to consider the ant. The ant is always busy, always storing up, always getting ready. Are we preparing? Are we getting ready? Be watched and stand firm in the faith. Be strong. Matthew 24, 44 say, Therefore, you be ready for the Son.
Sister Jackie Cleaver. Were you blessed today? Let us stay warm. Thank you, thank you, Sister Cleaver. I think there's a quick presentation for you at this time from Sister Johnson. Thank God for true life. Thank you. 